Bonjour mon ami, c'est moi, Madame Perryman. Comment ça va? Moi, bien, merci. Well, today we're going to be talking about French cooking. And one of the, the recipes I wanted to talk to you about today are French madeleines. They're little butter cakes. And they have a distinctive shape. They're baked in little, a little shell-shaped pan. And they're kind of a cross between maybe a cookie uh, and a mini muffin. And they're extra tasty to have with, with coffee, which is brings me to the second part of our little discussion here. And this is called a French coffee press. And this particular one makes about four four cups of coffee, and it's just a, a fancy little way to to get coffee whenever you you put the the grounds in and the hot water, and then it steeps for a bit, and then you push this little plunger down, and it makes really delicious coffee. But we're gonna we're gonna use it too here in a minute, and I'll show you how both of these work. These are the specialty pans that we're gonna be using today. This is called a Madeleine pan. And as you can see, it has little shell-shaped indentions. They're not very deep, probably, oh, a half an inch or so. Um, and they're just, uh, just like I said, kind of a shell shape. Um, and these will be, be probably the equivalent of maybe like, a, like the size of a mini muffin whenever we get finished with them. Let's talk about some of the ingredients we're gonna be using today. The first thing we're gonna have is 3 fourths of a cup of flour, and then we're gonna be using unsweetened cocoa, a pinch of salt, and a pinch, guys, is just what you can pick up between your first finger and your thumb. We're gonna be using some vanilla, and some eggs, sugar, and good old butter. Our directions say that we're supposed to sift together the flour, the cocoa, and the salt. And so we're gonna get that evenly incorporated. Okay, and all we have to do is just kind of gently, just kind of sift it through here. Some of you may have a, a bigger or smaller uh, little sifter, but however it works, it's just fine. And pour the salt in there. We're just getting the big chunks out of it and just incorporating and mixing it all up. That's what sifting does. Have to get it all. I'm about to finish sifting, and as you can see, there's some large little clumps of, of uh, cocoa, and I'm just kind of breaking those up. Cocoa kind of tends to clump up like that, and so that's what the, the sifting is, not only incorporating the ingredients together, but it's also capturing any of those lumps so we can kind of take care of those. And it's got the salt and the flour and the cocoa mixed up nicely together now. All right, next on the list is eggs, vanilla, and sugar. So I'm gonna crack my eggs here and make sure that they look like I want them to. So here's here's egg one going in the mixer. Boy, those are some nice strong eggs. Those, are, those girls have lots of good calcium in their feed, so good strong eggs. One, two, look at that one. That's a pretty one. It's got little brown speckles all over it. Three, and then a pretty green one. Four, okay, and all those look just fine. So what we're gonna do is put the egg. In my mixing bowl, I have the eggs, the vanilla, and the sugar. And we're gonna whisk this uh, until our eggs uh, turn kind of turn the batter a lemony color and you know it's kind of unusual because usually whenever we make uh, cakes and muffins and things like that we use the paddle but since we're trying to get these eggs to uh, to whip up smooth we're going to use uh, the whisk it's always good kind of mid mix to stop and scrape the bowl down and especially in, in mixers kind of like the KitchenAid like we use at school um, they tend to collect things down at the bottom that doesn't get mixed up very good so I always like to stop kind of midway and give it a good scrape. 
Now when you look at it, it's been mixing probably three or four minutes and it's gone from that golden color to kind of a, a light lemon yellow. And the other thing that's happening is, I'm gonna turn the mixer on here in just a second, but you can actually see uh, the the whip is leaving a pattern behind uh, in in uh, the egg egg mixture. And so that's that's what we're looking for. Let me turn it on here so you can see. The next thing on our list is to add the flour and cocoa mixture when it says uh, that we are supposed to fold that in. You guys remember folding is not stirring, it's folding, folding top to bottom, folding like this, and so we're getting everything incorporated here. If we stir it, we're kind of deflating the eggs that we worked hard to, to get fluffed up and so we're trying to to uh, keep those as fluffy as possible but still uh, incorporate our dry ingredients. So I've got this pretty well incorporated now and um, so the next thing on our list is to add the butter. And so I melted butter and I've let it cool just a little bit and so we don't want to cook the eggs and so I'm just gonna pour that in, and then the directions say to fold, fold it in the batter. So here we go, look at all that delicious butter. So we're folding that in, get that all incorporated. Okay, so here's our beautiful, delicious, shiny batter and I'm going to cover this and put it in the refrigerator for about an hour and one of the one of the schools of thought on why why this works best uh, is is because it allows the the flour uh, time to absorb the liquid and it makes a, a better end product um, you remember when we talked about leavening things like baking soda and baking powder well if you notice this recipe doesn't have leavening like that but it does have eggs that are leavening so you know typically whenever we make things like muffins and cakes we don't want that batter to hang around too long because the leavening goes flat but this is kind of uh, one of those exception kind of recipes so we're gonna let this sit and so that we'll have a, a beautiful end product in our madeleines. Our directions say to generously butter each one of the pans or each one of the little shells and then fill each each tin or each little cup about three-fourths full and you know how I like to use portion scoops so that's what what we're doing here, and I'm kind of dropping them off, and then we'll go back and smooth them up if we need to. Well, here they are filled, and I'm just going to take a, a butter knife and just kind of spread them out evenly in the pan. I have a little bit of batter left, probably mm, enough for maybe one part of part of one pan. So here comes my buddy Bruno. He's over here checking out, hoping I'm gonna drop some of this on the floor. He's hungry. And I have the pans in the oven. So here we go. It's time to take our madeleines out. It's been seven minutes. If you remember, we used two different pans. We used a silver pan, and then we used a dark pan that had a no-stick coating on it. And something that is always a really good thing to remember is if you have a darker pan, it takes less time. And so, look at these. These are on our silver pan, and these are just perfect. And see, the way you can always tell uh, when a baked good is finished is how it's starting to pull away from the pan, which is exactly what is happening there. But look at this over here. 
this is the dark pan and look around the edges i think we may have some some burnt edges on our little madelines on these so so this is a good a good lesson in adjusting the time and or the temperature on dark pans a lot of times um whenever i know that if something's going to cook hot i may reduce the temperature by about 25 degrees you know these baked at 425 so for just future reference, I may want to remember to, to bake these either at 400 or maybe only do that do them for maybe about five minutes as opposed to seven. But anyway, a good learning process here. Well, here's our beautiful little madeleines. I've got them out of the pan and they're still just a little bit warm to the touch. So I'm gonna dust them with some powdered sugar and they will be very tasty. Nice and chocolatey, with a little sweet topping of powdered sugar. Well, this is the coffee press I wanted to show you. And I've got my steaming water here, my boiling water, and I've got six tablespoons of coffee. And the way this works, we're just gonna pour the coffee in the bottom of the container here. And then we're gonna fill it up to just below the, the middle. Uh, with this not boiling but but very hot water just like this and we're gonna let this steep for at least four minutes the coffee's had time to steep for a little over four minutes and um, what's been going on in here is all of this the coffee grounds that we put in this hot water uh, have been uh, working on making the coffee and um, on the top here you have there's a filter and so what I'm going to do is push this plunger down and it's going to capture all of the coffee grounds and what will be left on top that will pour out will be some lovely French brewed French press coffee to do it pretty slow because you don't want the grounds to slip up into the into the coffee all right so coffee brewed like this actually has more caffeine than traditionally prepared coffee. So one, one cup of this has about as much caffeine as an espresso. One of the advantages of, of making coffee in, in a pot like this is that you get some full flavor of the coffee. When you, when you brew coffee traditionally, the oils from the coffee, uh, coffee bean are soaked up by the paper filter, but this, uh, this type of apparatus does not have a paper filter, so that oil uh, is able to be in, in the coffee, and so it tastes really nice. Um, this is, was a hazelnut it's starting to smell really nice. Um, well, I've been waiting all morning for this. Here's my first cup of coffee. Pouring it in my mug. Oh, it smells so good. There we go. And here's our beautiful madeleines that we made. All right. Bon appetit. <laughs> 